Yo, what's going on, my people? Welcome back to the Blake Spirit channel. Was that that was too cringe, isn't it? That walking, that was way too cringe. I need to think of something more elaborate when I'm doing these videos. I need maybe like a smoke effect or something. My head's not put in or whatever. But anyway, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be looking at and like another kind of deep dive or whatever into something on into one of the current affairs in the combat sports world at the moment. Last time it was on the Saudi Arabian money in boxing and how that's affecting it or whatever. And today I'm going to be looking at why the boxing, the way it is now in 2023, the reason we're having so many big fights, in my opinion, is because of influence boxing, of crossover boxing, how it started. When I did that video, I, I was thinking of making it like a series thing where I go into black like current affairs or whatever in the combat sports world. So it's like looking back, like the origins of something that's currently going on in combat sports, then look at the timeline, how it's evolved into what it is now and why it's such a big talking point now. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna call it. The timeline, this would be officially be number two, I guess. We've had Ryan Garcia versus Tank. We're having Spence Crawford, we're having Fulton anyway. It was just confirmed the other day that we're having uh, a battle of the undisputed uh, in terms of Canelo Alvarez, undisputed super middleweight champion versus Jamel, not Jamal, Jamel Charlo, the super welterweight uh, undisputed champion. Charlo, he's literally moving up two weights. Like, I mean, that's just such an intriguing fight. But anyway, not getting into that. But as you can see, yeah, loads of big fights happen, have, have happened this year in 23 are happening. Uh, Garcia Tank seems to be the springboard. This, this one, uh, I'm going to be looking at what made Ryan Garcia tank and then how all the other big fights are happening because of Ryan Garcia tank. Now, if you know your YouTube crossover box in history, I, I don't necessarily know it just because I'm a fan of the Misfits or whatever. I just know this just as a fan of YouTube or watching YouTube for so long. Out of that YouTube boxing, it all started with Joe Weller versus Theo Baker somewhere in Eastbourne, I think, or wherever, in a little gym down there. And since then, then we had KSI, Joe Weller, uh, KSI, Logan Paul, the two Logan Paul fights. And then Jake Paul, he went and did his thing, did Gibb, did Nate Robinson, did Ben Askren, did Tyron Woodley, one and two. Just kept doing and doing, just kept building and building up his resume uh, in the eyes of the professional, comp not just boxing, but as he's fighting MMA guys as well, so in the professional combat sports world. And now, I think personally, uh, you know, crossover boxing uh, or misfits, uh, or whoever's running the show or Kingpin, or whatever, all these different organizations, I think they should pay huge <laughs> respect to Jake Paul, to be honest, because yes, I know KSI and Logan Paul too, that was massive. But that could have just ended, they could have just, KSI hasn't fought since three years after that. And the only reason he's come back to fight is because of Jake Paul's uh, trajectory, insane trajectory. Um, you know, yes, he lost to Tommy Fury, but you know, still, I don't think it was a bad performance considering Tommy Fury's from a fighting family. He's from a fighting family, the Furies. You know what I'm here for? What are you here for? Domination. Why don't you take this <laughs> Messing with the fighting family here, mate. Messing with the Fury, so you're going to get it on Sunday night. <laughs> Uh, I thought he didn't do that bad, and he also dropped him. So you know, there's there's a win. He's got, he's got the win over Tomri in terms of the fight, not a boxing contest, but the fight. And Ryan Garcia being the marketing, uh, I wouldn't say genius, maybe that's a bit too far, but a marketing forward finger. That's for damn sure is that he started his own channel on the 20th of May 2020 uploaded his first video Twitch now today he's got 1.48 million subscribers um, so such a good move for him and I think he's pa he paved the way for fighters in general marketing themselves digitally like you know you see loads of uh, not just boxers but MMA guys as well you know Israel Adesanya although I think he might have started this a bit earlier but even still you know he's now uh, got a couple of million subscribers I think and nearly all boxers or fighters have their own channels, you know, or they're putting more effort into like, their Instagrams or, or I don't know, if they're streaming or something like that. Just to see Sean O'Malley, um, who was podcast, and all these different guys. Like, I really do think Ryan Garcia played a huge part in that movement in terms of fighters and marketing themselves. 
not only just starting a YouTube channel, Brian Garcia was smart enough to, to know that he was close to all his influencers, to where he was based back then, I think it was with Eddie Reynoso, uh, out in California. So it was nearby to all the influencers, all the influencers, California, Los Angeles, whatever, that seems to be the hub for American uh, YouTubers. And he collaborated with several other YouTubers, such as Tana Fox, the Paul Brothers, uh, Lily Pons, uh, loads more. Like Those are the ones I, I could just think on top of the head from my research. But he's collaborated with loads of them, and those also gave him traction, gave him more views, more subscribers, more eyes, more fans, more dedicated fans. Um, and it just builds, uh, builds a community, you know, each channel has a community. I'm hoping to build a community like on this one. So, um, yeah, Ryan Garcia definitely paved the way for boxing in that regard. And now as well as posting regularly on his YouTube channel, doing all the shorts from doing the crazy hands or whatever, you know, having lightning fast hands, uh, Ryan Garcia was also winning as well in his boxing career, you know, I think he was 20 you know, uh, when he started and then I think he's 20 and then he won three fights I think before his tank fight, so 23 and 1 now but he's 23 and 0 before his fight with tank, that's what he was doing and it was all coming together, it was all coming together, Ryan Garcia was starting to become a star, starting to get sponsorship deals all these fashion brands um, and all that stuff. So, uh, Ryan Garcia, he made himself a star. Now, the Tank versus Garcia rival was started actually a couple of years ago, actually started like around 2021. I think Garcia had called out Tank, uh, maybe even earlier than that. He called out uh, John to Dank Davis, who made just trash talking him in the Mike Tyson podcast, Hot Boxing. And Mike Tyson got the phone out, FaceTime to want to tank Davis, and those two just started talking shit to each other. I love you, this nigga talking mad shit over here, tank. <laughs> Look at this nigga. Tank. Two rounds, baby, two rounds. Two rounds. I don't care, you on pause. Two rounds. Two rounds, you're going to sleep. That's where it, I think that's where it really started to go on a different level, the tank Garcia rivalry. And then since then, it's it went on to uh, Tank versus Rolly Romero. I think that was a big uh, moment as well with Ryan Garcia in the crowd betting 20k and losing 20k to Errol Spence Jr. As I thought Rolly would win. Uh, God, how badly that turned out for him. And after months and years, literal years of trash talking each other and negoti negotiations going on, between PVC and uh, Golden Boy Promotions, Garcia Tank finally happened on the 22nd of April in Las Vegas in the T-Mobile Arena. Thank the Lord, because then that, like I said earlier, made the springboard for 2023, which is shaping up to be arguably the best year in boxing in time, in absolute time. Don't get me wrong, let's be grateful for these fights that are happening at the moment. You know, let's not try and beat down in any of the boxers. We can beat down the promoters because they're most of the time the reason why we don't get these fights. But the boxers anyway, normally it's not usually their fault. Not usually they'll just fight anyone anywhere, but it's always up to the broadcasters or promoters or whoever the hell, there's just too many people, isn't there? These two elements, these two guys, whatever, Ryan Garcia and Influence of Boxing, they created the springboard. They create the springboard for what is going on right now uh, in the sport of boxing, in these huge fights. People are saying that boxing's overshadowing the UFC. That has, no, one's, no one's said that in ages. Uh, don't get me wrong, there's always high quality fights, but in terms of building the stars and creating, you know, that. Maybe apart from John Jones and Cyril Gann, in, I think that was in January or whatever, we haven't really had a, really a big, big fight like that. Um, actually, Tell a lie, Makaya versus Volkanovski, what went on there. But apart from apart from those two, like, you know, you see, they usually put on a huge fight, you know, once a couple of months, once a month, you know. In the midst of this sort of power struggle that's going on between these MMA companies, boxing just seems to be uh, going to a new level, putting on ridiculous fights in both the men's and the women's game. Uh, and we have to be grateful to influence of boxing and Ryan Garcia, whether you like it or not. 
So that's it then for the second episode, officially, technically, whatever, of the of the timeline. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, make sure you smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe. If you agree with me, disagree with me, let me know. Let me know down in the comments. Uh, make sure you also follow my socials, my Twitter, my Instagram. Those are all in the, in the description as well. And yeah, when you go to bed tonight, uh, when thinking about this, or if you're having sitting down drinking a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, just just remember Joe Weller and Theo Baker sparring six years ago are the reasons why we're having such a great year in the pro boxing scene. As mental as that sounds, that's generally what I think. So just think about that. Let that sink in. And there we go. See you on the next one.